if this gives you a false sense of security, you might not get shot in the neck. Yeah, it also stops you from getting shot in the chest, but I guess you missed that episode of Thomas, did you? I really must have, because that sounds dark as shit. You know what I really hate? What I really fucking hate about Bullet Train? It's one of the best things to come out last year. I don't mean that as an insult, but considering the movie's genre, you'd think there'd be a few other things worth noting. Aside from the obvious exceptions, 2022 kind of sucked, movie-wise, and it came down to lesser-known films to remind us that some people still know how to fucking write. Unfortunately, despite a well-acted cast, including Brad Pitt, the movie failed to get the attention it deserved with mid-to-average reviews. Some people may blame this on, well, you know. But honestly, it's probably the fact that in the end, it's just an action movie that didn't have the same hype as something like Jurassic World Dominion. I mean, that movie had an overblown runtime, and uh, old characters coming back, and uh, political messages, and locusts. Does Bullet Train have locusts? I don't think so. What it does have is lots of great action, a unique setting being the aforementioned bullet train traveling through Tokyo, and an engaging cast that are clearly having fun with this. Along with a scenario that places a bunch of assassins in a combined area who are all kind of sort of maybe after the same thing, but then you realize it's a bit more complicated than that until the end when it actually isn't. There is also some liberties taken when it comes to logic, but then again, when isn't there? The question is, is this movie an underrated masterpiece, a generic action movie trying to hide behind special effects and pretty colors, or just a fun movie that's definitely worth watching but shouldn't be thought about too much? It should be obvious, but let's find out as we analyze Bullet Train, which, oddly enough, does have a... Pretty long runtime, hopefully for a good reason. We open on a surprisingly dark note with a young boy in the hospital in critical condition. We see one of our main characters, known as the father, played by Andrew Kojai. I think his relation to the kid is quite obvious. And the elder, also his father, played by Hiroyuki Sonata. Right, and the snake. It's somewhat relevant. It turns out the kid was pushed off of a roof by an unknown person who, luckily for him, left a convenient note saying he's on the bullet train. The same bullet train that our lead Brad Pitt is headed to to complete his supposedly simple job of obtaining a briefcase full of cash. I'm not even trying to kill people if someone dies. That's an exaggeration. It is. And that is, in fact, Sandra Bullock playing the handler, which, in turn, does lead to a lot of funny scenes. Okay, I'm gone. Well, that's a start. All simple jobs all the time. That's a terrible business plan. Um, You're overthinking it. You're underthinking it. It's not a word. Yes, it is. Really? I think it is. Did you Google it? It doesn't matter. Shit. Fuck. No. Shit. Fuck. What? If I had one in the chamber, I would rock this bad boy right now. Boundaries. We need boundaries. It's also mentioned that he's filling in for Carver, who is currently sick, and that he has bad luck, which is shown to us through a series of flashbacks. I hope you enjoy these, because most of the characters have them. Uh, some multiple. Like Lemon and Tangerine, played by Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson, respectively. They're twin assassins, never explained, and currently possess the same briefcase Ladybug's after. Something called compulsion or something. I have to take it if I see it. You need to talk to someone. Serious. A goldfish biscuit. I mean, I don't, I don't understand it. We'll get back to that in a minute, as the father is about to kill the target. <laughs> well, that's what you get, you sexist asshole. Thinking only men can push kids off rooftops. Ladybug easily obtains the briefcase without being noticed, and we see that Lemon and Tangerine also have the job of transporting the son, played by Logan Lerman, back to his father. You ever watch Thomas the Tank Engine? Here we go. Uh, you watch something nowadays, what is it, huh? Nothingness. Twists, violence, drama, no message. What's the point? 
Yes, Lemon has an obsession with Thomas the Tank Engine, which is hilarious, but the fact that they're, ironically enough, on a train is barely mentioned. It's not the same kind of train, but still. They have an argument about how many people they've killed saving the sun, and scenes like this really make the movie. Bob goes playing poker. They even killed the movie's director, David Leitch, playing an innocent bystander. We learn that the son's father is the White Death, who has a thing for removing arms, and that the briefcase contains the ransom money. The same briefcase that Ladybug has currently stolen and is about to leave the train with, so they're kind of fucked. <laughs> or not. We're not going to get to see this right now, as instead we find out that the prince, played by Joey King, plans on forcing the father to kill the White Death, and has a henchman on standby to finish off his son if he doesn't cooperate. Being that one assassin wants to kill the White Death, and two are about to be killed because of him, I think it's about time for a flashback. One that shows us that the White Death essentially rose up the ranks and took over a Yakuza group, despite being warned he probably shouldn't be trusted. That motherfucker's definitely a diesel then, isn't he? We also find out that his wife was killed in a drunk driving accident, and to make matters worse, the son has died. You know what that means? Another flashback! That's kind of pointless, as it's for the wolf, played by Benito Ocasio, another assassin whose wife was poisoned at their wedding. He's the same guy who's currently trying to kill Ladybug because he thinks he's responsible due to him being a cocktail server at the wedding. My bad luck is biblical. And yeah, the fight's pretty damn funny. I will ruin your life the way you ruin mine. Dude, I don't even know you! Unfortunately for him, a backstory means shit in this movie, and he incidentally kills himself. My bad luck is biblical. Not a new idea, but still pretty funny. He hides the briefcase, only for the prince to find it through luck, I guess, and he recognizes Lemon as somebody who previously shot him. I shoot a lot shot of people. twice. How? He offers to give him the case back if he just lets him go, but the problem is they accuse him of killing the son without actually specifying who he is, and Ladybug assumes he's talking about the wolf, so he doesn't deny it. This leads to another fight, and again, it's real damn fun. <sighs> He knocks him out, puts sleeping powder in his water, and notices the son was killed the same way as the people at the wedding, being snake venom, meaning the killer is probably there too. As is the snake, which will surely mean something eventually. He manages to outwit Tangerine using his handy fireworks, and that's not good for them as the White Death wants to make sure they're not lying. Luckily, his men aren't exactly that bright. Wave to your fucking fast, princess. He's a fucking happy chappy, ain't he? Meanwhile, the prince makes the father go through all the combinations to get the case open, which isn't that hard to do if there's only three dials. And she puts a bomb in the case that'll explode if opened. As a backup, the main plan is the bomb she put in the handgun that will explode if fired, as the White Death likes to kill assassins with their own weapon. You push my son off the roof. Right. Bring me to this train. Frame me as an assassin and use my gun. That would blow up in his face. Ladybug figures the wolf must have been after another assassin known as the Hornet, who's known for using the aforementioned snake venom. But then Tangerine shows up, and as usual, his attempts to talk it out fail. <laughs> Did I mention these fight scenes are real damn fun? I think I did. This gets interrupted by a concessions girl, and I really feel this kind of humor fits the movie, as she's completely oblivious to what's going on. It's a great scene. Oh, I, I would love a bottle of water. 
and for you to hit the like button, it's right there, along with the subscribe button. As long as you're not offended by my dislike for other 2022 movies. The fight continues until the White Death demands to see Lemon, Tangerine, and the case, or everybody dies. My bad luck is biblical. They temporarily team up to have Ladybug pretend he's Lemon, as nobody knows what he looks like, along with a fake briefcase. This leads to maybe the movie's funniest scene. So no one gets greedy. The prince then tells the father that even though he did what she wanted, she's still gonna have the son killed, because I guess she's just evil. Kind of takes away his incentive to kill the White Death, but it would be nice to know a bit more about what the father was doing when his son was pushed, as his backstory is never really explained. You're a terrible father, and your son is going to pay for all the mistakes that you've made. What an asshole. Lemon then turns up, asking if they've seen the case, and because she said briefcase instead of suitcase, he assumes that one of them must be bad, as most people would automatically say suitcase. You're gonna close yours, and I'm gonna count to three. And whichever one of you is in charge, you're gonna raise your hand, and whichever one is it, you point to one who is. Now, if you both raise your hands, or you both point at each other, I know you're both liars and the truth ain't in you, and then I'll fucking shoot you both. The father decides to take the bullet, as her death would mean his son's death. Even though she just said she'd kill him anyway. They hide the body, but then Lemon finds the gun, which incidentally is not something a kidnapper gives you. But then the sleeping powder kicks in, and she shoots him. Ladybug kicks Tangerine out of the train, and we have one of the most illogical scenes in the movie when he jumps back on the bullet train and breaks the glass to get back in. It's fucking stupid, but at this point, you should probably stop caring. Ladybug reobtains the suitcase that has now been returned, and is attacked by the Hornet, played by Zazy Beats, who's been secretly following him the whole time, as the case contains the ransom money she was promised. He does offer to just give her the case, but as usual, it's never that easy, and he gets injected with the venom. He then injects her too, and manages to use the only antidote before she can. My bad luck is biblical. <coughs> Shit, man. <coughs> You don't have another one? You gotta be better prepared. I'm mansplaining, I'm mansplaining. In most cases, this kind of thing would be unnecessarily cruel, but in this case, she kind of deserved it. Water? Would you, would you like some water? No? You want a blanket? You want me to hold your hand? I like how he keeps it up too, making up things to say until she's finally dead. It's dark comedy at its finest. Tangerine finds Lemon's body, an actual sad scene in this movie, and tells the White Death to fuck off. He then tells Tangerine he's going to kill him, and there won't be any witnesses because he bought all the tickets. Thing is, the prince is still here, and thanks to the diesel sticker that Lemon stuck on her back, he knows she must be bad. Unfortunately, Ladybug does not know this, and... Well, that was disappointing. I mean, everybody in this movie's entertaining, but I especially liked him. They attempt to leave, but she pretends her backpack is stuck and his last chance to get off has failed. The elder finally arrives, who, if you've forgotten by now, is the father's father, and Ladybug gets bit by the snake. Which means nothing, as he's already had a dose of the anti-venom, so it kind of was pointless. My bad luck is biblical. She then tells the elder that his son is dead, and his grandson's about to be dead too. But there's just one little problem. My grandson was pushed off a roof. What makes you think I would leave him unprotected? You know, you really should have thought of that. And then again, he probably should have told his son that too, and avoided this whole mess, but it is what it is. She says she'll kill the White Death herself, don't know why she didn't just start with that, and the Elder explains that the White Death killed his wife. 
He then finds his son, who he somehow knew was not dead, and Lemon's alive too, because he had a vest on. And it's damn impressive that we have two scenes in which the brothers mourn each other's death. Only thing is, considering that Lemon did not have a hole in his neck, why the fuck didn't he check his pulse? Especially because he had a vest on. Did he keep it a secret for some reason? Fucking hell, even Ladybug checked the wolf's pulse. It's just what you fucking do. I mean, they're professional assassins. I just can't get past this. He's not too pleased about this, but after some more great comedy... A bullet through your fucking ass. When you point a finger at someone in blame, there are four fingers pointing back at you. Three. That's weird. Fuck it off! They eventually team up and devise a new plan. Well, it's not really a plan. A lemon's gonna take control of the train while the elder and son fight off the men. But first, the prince still has her plan to kill the White Death, played by Michael Shannon. And considering how much he's been built up, I'm not disappointed. We find out that the prince is actually his daughter who wants to kill him because she didn't get enough attention or something. And based on this scene alone, I think the reason she didn't want to do it herself is because he's accompanied by two guards, who would likely not take kindly to this. It doesn't matter anyway, as he's not interested in shooting his own daughter, so that's that. But there is still that briefcase, which Ladybug is currently using to stall them. What if it's a bomb and it blows up in our faces? You think these stupid masks are gonna protect us? Can't guarantee that means what I think it means, but if it does, and you get it, then congratulations. You're one of the smart ones. Anyway, guess what? The White Death was behind the whole thing. Secretly sending all the assassins to the train to obtain the briefcase to have them kill each other. The reason being that all of them are partly responsible for his wife's death. Um, movie, that's three people seeking revenge for the same reason. There's uh, more than one tragedy out there, you know. This does include his son, too, as even he was partly to blame, but the only person this doesn't include is the wolf. Maybe I'm missing something here, but I think that was just a coincidence. A coincidence that would have seen the whole plan fail if he hadn't have shown up. And as a whole, this doesn't really make any sense as obviously anything could happen to fuck up his plan, which it has. But I guess, just don't think about that. Thing is, the most pivotal target of all, the one responsible for his wife's death, is Ryan Reynolds. Playing the role of Carver, the person he's filling in for. Fun fact, this cameo here is actually his way of paying Brad Pitt back for his cameo in Deadpool. I think the dilemma is obvious, the White Death thinks he's Carver, but... Carver! Isn't that convenient? My bad luck is biblical. So the epic climax commences. It has sword fights, alcohol consumption, and the holding out for a hero dance version. The Elder and the White Death fight, and apparently there's no episode of Thomas that teaches you how to drive a bullet train. But he did manage to get it moving at top speed. This leads to a great climax that apparently some people don't like, but personally I feel it fits the movie's tone perfectly. It's got a lot of great kills, some hilarious moments, like the manual flying out the window, but I do question if the train they ran into was empty. I mean, what is this, Power Ranger logic? But most importantly, the two, in the end, make up. But I got another brother now! Really? Fuck no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not dead. He's just not. There's a lake there for a reason. The White Death proves to be superior, the water bottle is given a backstory, and if you still think this movie makes no fucking sense... My bad luck is biblical. This definitely isn't changing that. Ladybug's alright though, as is the snake, and the White Death, who still wants to kill him. Do not call me bro! 
Okay. But the rig gun does him in, which is a good thing, because otherwise her character would just look stupid. My bad luck is biblical. Speaking of which, apparently a massive train wreck can't kill anybody, including the prince, who I guess just likes to kill people. I am the white death! My bad luck is biblical. And given the fact that they've most definitely crashed into the abandoned home district, a uh, happy ending. Sandra Bullock shows up just in case nobody noticed. We're apparently still supposed to believe Ladybug has bad luck. My bad luck is biblical. And obviously the not dead lemon is the one who killed the prince with a tangerine truck. The definition of a damn good payoff. And that was Bullet Train. And it really is one of the best movies of 2022. When a movie devotes to non-stop action and comedy, it goes without saying that some liberties are gonna be taken. Obviously, most of the movie makes no fucking sense. The White Death's overall plan, along with the finale, is just insane. But in the end, that's what this movie is, and it's not trying to hide it. It's pretty much what I expected after seeing the trailer, and aside from the idiotic reasons to dislike it, as mentioned earlier, I'm not sure what there is to complain about. The fight scenes are entertaining as hell, as are the flashbacks, not something usually said. The comedy is mostly spot on, especially Brad Pitt, who I really feel is right for this, despite being almost 60. But that's not to say the other characters aren't equally as good and seem to be having a great time. Lemon's obsession with Thomas is comedic genius. The prince sells the manipulative role perfectly. And the White Death is a damn entertaining antagonist. The only real flaw is that some characters aren't as drawn out as others and some of the motivations don't really make sense. But for the most part, it gives you what it promised. Yeah, it's not that hard to figure out that the movie's deliberately complicated until the end when it becomes real obvious, but I still think that's okay. If you agree with the not-so-positive reviews on this, I'd really like to know what you were expecting. It's not the best thing that came out last year, even with limited competition, but if you're looking for something decent that hasn't literally taken every nomination it could take, then it's a pretty safe bet. It's a fun movie, and at the very least, a damn good time. I'm the Analyst, and remember kids, if you want a deadly assassin to try and kill you, you don't have to kill their wife. There's plenty of other options. So, you've made it to the end. That's an impressive feat indeed. Since you managed that, I guess check out the gaming channel, in which I cover a variety of gaming topics, like analysis videos, such as this one. If you're into that, then press the link in the description. It's that simple.